Welcome back. You're listening to the discussion, Edge Computing, real-time insights that deliver real results, sponsored by Dell Technologies on Federal News Network. I'm your host, Jason Miller. My guests today are Kristen Bilhart, the Global Marketing Director for the Edge Solutions Group at Dell Technologies, Zach Goldstein, the Chief Information Officer and Director of High Performance Computing and Communications at NOAA, Mac Townsend, the Technical Director for Architecture and Engineering in the CIO's office at the Defense Intelligence Agency, and Lieutenant General Bruce Crawford, the CIO G6 for the Army. We were talking about the network, we're talking about IT modernization in the last uh, segment, but I think data has come up several times, but at the same time, this is not just about a data or technology, it's also about the people and can the people do their work at the edge. And I wanna bring Zach in here. You mentioned uh, the story about meteorologists who are working, for instance, with wildfires or are arm in arm with smoke jumpers and commanders. Talk about the edge and how the, the employees or, or you know, the, the people who are working at the edge are, are both taking advantage of that power, that accessibility. So, so working at the edge uh, is very empowering of the folks at the edge. Uh, to be a meteorologist and have the same tools in the, in the woods that you'd have sitting in your weather forecasting office is, is a very powerful proposition. Um, you know you're connected, you're getting, you're getting the, the same satellite image that uh, from 22,000 miles up that you can get anywhere else. You're getting the output of our supercomputers uh, at your fingertips. The, uh, the challenge that, uh, and, and, and so there's a, there's a pull, right? Uh, give me more, uh, give me more uh, capability, give me more uh, artificial intelligence support. Uh, and we talked about some of the networking implications of that, but there's also a cultural and I'm reminded based on the, the comment that Kristen made in the last segment, the need for this uh, uh, homogeneous fabric so that the network and the system looks the same from wherever you, wherever you are Achieving that is actually a bit of a challenge because there's a natural affinity between people and computing at the edge. It empowers them and it goes along with their idea that I'm the system, but each person at the edge is actually uh, the beginning or the end, depending upon whether you're doing observations with maybe an unmanned aircraft or whether you're giving forecasts in the forest, you're at the beginning or the end of an entire value chain. And to achieve the kind of uh, seamless network and, and modernized uh, processing that we know we need to make this all work, we're going to have to almost go counterculture because people like being empowered. But if you take that so far, then you can't manage the configurations of what you've got. And uh, uh, it's a challenge that, that not only uh, uh, it requires uh, control, but it's actually part of the training that I think we need to give our people uh, in, in so many ways. Uh, how, do you, how do you interact with AI? How do you manage the data that you're stewarding? Uh, and, and then on top of that, uh, what's the, the governance structure that we overlay to make sure that uh, even as we're empowering the users, we're making sure that the, the power doesn't lead to suboptimization of the overall value chain. I think Zach brings, brings up a very a couple of very interesting points. Uh, one of this is really about governance. It was also about expectations. Kirsten, do you get a sense from when you talk to agency customers, when you talk to, to CIOs and types that, they're, that they understand the expectations and that's a balance that is getting harder to achieve because there's more expectations? Sure. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. Expectations are, are only growing and, and it points to how technology is a major enabler, but it doesn't cover everything, right? Um, there, there needs to be in organizations as you're bringing um, information down to the front line and you're expecting them to make decisions from it, you want them to make you know, the right decisions, right? So there's, you know, it brings up um, val the, the values of an organization and how do you, you know, infuse those values into your, into your frontline people so they're making the right call with the information that they're receiving. And it's also, it's, it's judgment, right? And, and, um, and, and helping your team members use, use the right judgment to write the, write the right decisions. Um, but it's, an, it's incredibly empowering, right? And, and I I think that's that's uh, 
it's an opportunity to bring in fresh talent who is, ex they're excited and invigorated by the opportunity to contribute, to the opportunity to bring their, their brain power and their talents to bear and, you know, Help, help mission, help make the world a better place or whatever the organization is doing. So, so technology is the enabler, but you are relying your human talent to use that technology um, in the way that that best supports the mission in line with values of the organization. And, and that's both, a, it's both a challenge, but an amazing opportunity. So you kind of have to lean into it, embrace it, and invest the time with your teams so that it's going in the direction that you need it to go. I think that, um, that this is this is key, and I know that that Bruce will agree with me on the training and and some of these other things. He probably wants to expand on that, but you know this is a cultural shift. This is you know we're we're just inter we've just basically entered the information age, and now with COVID, it's really accelerating things because people are seeing what they do at home, they should be able to do at work as they're going forward, and so. To, to Kirsten's point, you're bringing in a lot of, you can bring in a lot of new talent and new capability because people are finally getting to play with some of the tools that, that they use on a regular basis. You know, um, for example, we have a lot of devices that are out there now that are, that are using computer vision and, you know, algorithms to help us find shopping places or chart better paths when we're driving to and from locations and things of that nature. All of this stuff is, is out there in sort of this new digital age as, as we're moving forward. And the culture in some of our environments, mine included, within, within these large industrial in, environments has not quite caught up in some ways. But COVID is kind of pushing us there. And I wanted to sort of hand off to Bruce there to see if he wanted to expand on that. All right, Mac, thank you. Uh, I think... Uh, I think it was Kirsten who mentioned it, and it's been brought up a couple of times here. Uh, uh, the, the topic and the big idea of empowering the user. Uh, I believe, uh, number one, uh, the user uh, is the center of gravity for everything that we've talked about today. So what's the most important thing we can do to empower the user? Uh, I think that comes down to training. Uh, and so taking a step back, uh, in the Army, we've got 15,000 IT professionals. In the cyber force, there are another four or 5,000 or so. Uh, I believe moving forward, the first thing we got to do is reimagine the workforce of the future. So what does that mean? Uh, quickly here, uh, in the interest of time, uh, I think we got to fundamentally move away from this idea of certifications to a focus on how do we rapidly upskill and reskill the workforce. Uh, again, at, at speed. And so you could take the traditional route and we'll have a need for that to continue to send you know, people away to the two-year school, the three-year school. We absolutely need more of that. But what we found as we look at what we're doing with cloud in the Army, we stood up an artificial intelligence uh, task force. I mentioned the Enterprise Cloud Management Office, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what skills does the workforce really need? And so we came up with this concept uh, and it's a new idea here inside the Army. It's called Quantum Leap. And what Quantum Leap is about is reimagining the workforce of the future and posturing ourselves to focus on rapid upskill and reskill of the workforce uh, to deliver uh, not the skills we're going to need in the Army of 2028, but the skills we're going to need in the next three to five years. Because our initial assessment was about only about 40% of the current workforce, and we've got the probably the best and most talented workforce we've ever had have the resident skills that are gonna be required, not in the next 10 years, but in the next three to five years. And so what Quantum Leap it takes advantage of is uh, online training. There's been a lot of venture capitalist, uh, corporate America investments in online training. And all I think COVID has done is accelerated uh, those investments in the, I'll call it institutional acceptance of online training is a delivery mechanism uh, for those skills. So more to follow on Quantum Leap, but my point is the best thing that we can do for the workforce to empower them is to ensure that they're trained. Uh, we recognize that, and I know now that they recognize that. We are just about out of time, but I wanna give everyone one last kind of 
uh, 30 seconds or less, uh, if there's one missionary or one area of cloud compute, uh, of edge computing that you guys are really gonna focus on over the next six months, year, two years, what would it be? Uh, Zach, about 30 seconds, what's the one area that edge is really gonna make a difference for, for NOAA? Citizen science and collaborating with uh, the world to improve our ability to protect the American people Excellent. at the edge. Excellent, Mac, what, what the one area of, of the edge you really focused on? Foundational military intelligence through things like our Mars efforts and various other types of things in trying to tie together all the relevant components of the various different mega data sources that we're getting now and, and drive it down into a, a viable common operational picture as we're going forward. All right, back to the data. General Crawford. It's how edge computing is going to enable this idea of multi-domain operations and the third tenet of multi-domain operations, which is this idea of convergence, which is near real-time access for any sensor, uh, any shooter or weapon system in any command and control mode. Uh, that, that's the, our, our focus uh, in the context of uh, how uh, the importance of edge computing, how it enables MDO. All right, and Kirsten, you get the last word. What should they know? about how to get how to achieve those goals. <laughs> well, well, please remember that Dell Technologies is here to support you, to enable you uh, to leverage the edge to do everything you want to do there. So thank you. All right, very good. That was a great conversation. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today. So let me thank my guests. Kristen Bilhart is the Global Marketing Director for the Edge Solutions Group at Dell Technologies. Zach Goldstein is the Chief Information Officer and the Director of High Performance Computing and Communications at NOAA. Mac Townsend is the Technical Director for Architecture and Engineering in the CIO's office at the Defense Intelligence Agency. And Lieutenant General Bruce Crawford is the Chief Information Officer G6 for the U.S. Army. Thank you all so much for taking the time today. I'm Jason Miller, and you've been listening to the discussion Edge Computing, Real-Time Insights that Deliver Real Results, sponsored by Dell Technologies on Federal News Network. For more on this discussion, visit federalnewsnetwork.com and search Dell.